If your player can push the enemy when moving and that is not what you want to happen, chances are that you are using a dynamic rigid body for your movement system. What happens is that the player's rigid body is applying force onto the other object and in case of a dynamic rigid body it reacts automatically by pushing it towards the edge. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. There are two ways to fix it. A quick fix would be to tweak the mass of our dynamic rigid body and a proper fix would be to use a kinematic rigid body by creating a custom movement system which is a more time consuming solution. Now if you want to grab this project the link will be in the description. So starting with the quick fix I'm going to check that my player is using the rigid body for movement it is a dynamic rigid body and it is using the mass of 1. So I'm going to select the object that I do not want to be pushed, so the enemy chicken, and I'm going to ensure that the constraints on freeze rotation on Z is set to be true, so I'm not going to allow my object to be rotated, and I'm going to select the mass of this object, and I'm going to set it to something higher than the player, something much higher. So let's set it to be 1000. Okay, and now if I press play, you will see now that if I try pushing the enemy object or the object that the mass we have increased, I can inflict such a force to make it move. So this is a great solution for static objects, but there is one caveat with it. I'm going to open my uh, scene 3 fix dynamic rigid body problem where my chicken enemy is moving on its own. So if I press play here, you will see that now the chicken is pushing our player because the player's mass is less than the chicken's mass and basically the chicken enemy is inflicting enough force for the player to move uh, when it is pushed by the chicken. While we can't really push the chicken even if we try, the chicken is inflicting such a force that we are being pushed, we can't really push back. So again we could increase the player's mass and it would be at square one where everybody can push everybody else, although the chicken is um, moving with a static force and probably it will always be pushing the player unless we implement some simple behavior where the chicken would stop in front of the player and perform some attack behavior so we would hide this pushing mechanic by implementing some sort of in uh, smart AI. Okay so let's see how the second fix can be applied. Here I am in my scene when I'm using kinematic rigid body to move the player and the enemy. And as you can see, I can't push the enemy and the enemy cannot push me, while they both can move and collide with the ground as well as with the walls, but it is all driven by a custom movement logic which takes a bit of time to code because it is all driven by our custom script. So the problem that we have is that it is not that simple to swap the kinematic rigid body and the dynamic rigid body because, for example, the dynamic rigid body is affected by the gravity and forces by default, kinematic rigid body is not. So we need to apply all the forces and the gravity force through our custom script. The second problem is that we need to call move position and move rotation on a kinematic rigid body to perform any kind of movement or rotation as well as we need to use physics queries in our custom script to detect any sort of collision between other bodies and our kinematic rigid body. Now obviously there are some benefits like it should be less demanding on the system resources so basically your custom movement system can be a lot more performant than the dynamic rigid body based system as well as you can add all of the different features that the platformer should have without worrying that the dynamic rigid body will be stopping you from implementing some cool logic that you want to have in your game. Now if you want to check out the project just go to assets and open scene 4 fix kinematic rigid body and if you select the player agent kinematic you will see that it contains a rigid body 2D that has a body type kinematic and it has a player game object which contains a player kinematic script. If we open it up you will see that it is what drives the movement system of our player. It has some parameters at the top. In the update, we are getting all the input from the player, so the movement, movement row, and jump information about what we should do. I'm also setting the local scale to rotate the player or to flip its sprite to be pointing right or left. 
Now the magic that is driving our kinematic rigid body happens in the fixed update. I am using a very crude implementation of a state pattern using an enum and based on which state I am in, I'm going to check of course if we are grounded, but basically this is the same what we would do with the kinematic rigid body. But here we need to also react to the collision that could happen if we were to move in the next position in the next frame based on the current velocity. So let me right click and go to the definition of this method. Here I am adding some extra distance to that check and I'm using a check collision in method that passes the uh, direction and the distance uh, with which we should cast our collider. Let me go to the method, uh, go to the definition and this is just a a collider to cast dot cast method. So I'm using collider to the dot cast method to cast this collider in the direction with uh, populating the raycast hit to the array with the results of our collision if we have collided with something or not. And I'm passing the distance. So how far we are going to move to the next frame? Depending on this, we need to detect the collisions uh, and we need to react to those. Now, if you are not familiar with this method, collider2d.cast uh, casts the collider shape in the scene starting at the collider's position, ignoring the collider itself based on the input parameters. So the direction which we pass and the distance, it is using the distance that we pass to cast this collider as far as we want. And it returns a array of raycasts hit to the results. We pass this in and we are going to achieve or get the number of colliders that were detected. If we pass the array of size two, we are only going to get two uh, colliders and the rest will be discarded. We will use those later, but it also returns an int. So how many colliders have we hit? If there were no colliders, we're going to get zero. So we can use this return value to actually confirm if we have collided with something or not. If we have, we can access those colliders by getting the results that we have returned from this cast uh, method. The idea here is that if in the next frame we would end up moving into another collider, we need to stop our movement in this direction. Here we're going to stop our player from falling down uh, and getting into another collider since the distance that we move in depends on the velocity. If we are falling down and we stop, we will end up seeing a fall and idle animation flicking until we drop close enough to our uh, collider so that the grounded check will trigger. Now to remedy this, we need to manually move the distance between us and the collider just before we have stopped the movement. So when the velocity is too great for us to move using the physics, but we still are too far for the grounded check to trigger. Now my method returns a bool value based on the int value that is returned. If the int is greater than zero, this means that we have actually collided with something and I'm passing the result, the, the collision result, which has size of two. So I only want to get the two colliders that were detected. The rest, if there are more, will be discarded. Now I'm using this detection in the check if grounded method of my player kinematic script. And basically I'm also passing some extra distance when I'm idle or when I'm moving, I want this distance to be twice the value of the safety distance, which is some small value like 0.005 or 0.01, depending on what you want to achieve. And this is something that you want to pick. Basically when I'm idle or moving, I want to detect a bit uh, lower using my grounded check to ensure that I'm not flipping between falling and idle or falling and movement animation. While when I'm in the falling state, I will just use the one time of this value and I'm going to pass this to the collision detection dot check collision. I'm going to check this in the downwards direction. So vector two dot down and I'm using mathf dot agent mover dot current velocity dot y. So the y value of the current velocity multiplied by the time dot fix delta time plus this extra distance. So this is the distance with which we, I'm going to cast our collider downwards to detect if we have uh, are close enough to the ground to stop our movement downwards, to stop our falling behavior. Now, as a return value, I'm using a tuple. I'm returning here the bull value. So if we have or haven't collided with something 
as well as the reference to the Raycast hit 2D. So the first object that we have found or the first object from the array, it might be null or it might be a reference to the ground collider that is close enough for us to detect it. Now I'm doing so because I have this handle collision movement down method, basically checks if we are grounded when we are falling. If we are grounded, we need to set this current state to be idle, we need to play the idle animation, we need to stop the movement of our player. But there is one more thing that we need to do. To make sure that we are close enough to the ground that the ground check is triggered when we are idle or when we are moving, we need to move the remaining distance from the current player position towards the ground collider. And this is those three lines. We are calculating the distance using the hit result dot distance. And of course we need to subtract the safety distance so we do not move close enough for the two colliders to be clipping. Now if we take a look at the tip, this hit result dot distance, so the raycast hit 2D dot distance, we're going to say that this is the distance from the ray origin to the impact point, which isn't very clear. From my experience, we could calculate it as the center point of our collider at the start position and the center point of the casted collider at the point where it is colliding with the ground. Basically, this is the distance between the casted collider and the ground itself. So this is the distance we should use to move our player to be touching the collider. That's why we are subtracting the safety distance to be a bit higher than this specific point. Now to perform the movement itself, I'm using agent mover .force movement and passing a vector to on X I have zero, on Y I have minus distance. I'm going to go to the definition of it. And basically I'm using a rigid body to do that position. So I'm teleporting the rigid body closer to the ground collider by setting the rigid body dot position plus our offset. Now we can analyze this code on your own when you download the project. Basically the kinematic mover, so my custom script, is saving a velocity as vector two. And basically I'm setting the jump. So it is setting the velocity to be jump power. So this is 6.5 uh, F. And I'm going to also have the move horizontally, which is setting the X value by multiplying the input by the speed. And I can stop the movement. So basically stop the velocity. So set the velocity to, to be zero on X or Y. But the most important point is that we need to also perform the movement. So we need to call rigid body to do dot move position and use the velocity that we have calculated times the fixed delta time to actually perform the movement. And this happens in my player kinematic in the fixed update at the end of all the calculations when I know that the velocity is set in such a way that we are not going to end up inside another collider, I'm going to call my agent mover dot perform the movement. One more important thing that I want to show you is in the handle jump state, if I go to the definition of it, I'm going to check if the current state is the jumping state. If I have just started jumping, I'm going to apply the jump force. So I'm going to set the Y value of the velocity to a specific value. And I'm going to also play the animation. Now, if I'm not jumping, but I have already performed the jump, I'm going to check if the current velocity dot Y is less than zero. In this case, I need to transform the state or transition to the falling state. But if we are constantly jumping, we need to apply gravity uh, on our own so i'm going to call agent mover dot apply gravity and this method simply adds to the current velocity physics 2d dot gravity remember that the y value is by default negative so that's why we have this plus and we are going to multiply this by the fixed delta time to decrease the y value when we are jumping until we start falling and of course we need to perform the check to handle the collision for the movement so left and right as well as the movement up. So when we hit something upwards from the player, we need to also stop the movement. And basically those two are using the same kind of check uh, by checking the check collision for movement, which is uh, the same call to the check collision in uh, for our collision detector. So it is casting the collider upwards or to the right or to the left. And in case of the stop movement X, I'm just uh, setting the velocity uh, on X to be zero this is how i'm going to stop the player from moving right or left into another collider now if you want to know more about the state pattern i have a course about design patterns in unity which you can check out the link will be in the description
Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.